I just got this tackle box in the mail from our Bass and Buds, John and Lindia over at Small Water Charters. And it is filled up with some old school gold, including a couple of very special fish catchers from the state of Florida. Stick around, you are not gonna wanna miss this one. Retro bassin', kicking some ass and wearing rayon jackets. Thinking about bill dance, watching these fish prance through my Ray-Ban glasses. Ain't nothing better than 40 year old lures coming off of Zepco 33. Out on the bass boat, making beer cans float, doing some trespassing. Fishing it old school, this old stuff rules. Welcome to Retro Bassin'. The last time we were down near Okeechobee, Florida, hanging out with small water charters, slinging banjo minnows, and stalking Roland Martin. John and Lindia said they had a number of old school baits they had to dig up and were gonna send my way. Here the baits are, and when they arrived, I quickly knew that I was way in over my head. Even though I'll be hopefully attending the NFLCC, that's the National Fishing Lure Collectors Club, national meeting next month in Springfield, Illinois. When it comes to the glass eye, hand-painted, wooden variety of baits, I'm really a neophyte. Lures in the 70s, 80s, and 90s, yeah, that's much more my wheelhouse. So I had to seek a little help on this episode. In preparation for this episode, I reached out to my antique lure dealer buddy, Daniel, over at Dee's Tackle Box, and he was able to help me identify most of the baits and give me a little history on them as well. You might have noticed a little mini shrine to Roland Martin to my left. Well, let's just say you're gonna have to stick around to the end of the video to see what that's all about. All right, let's get this cleared up and get into this box of old school gold. So here we've got a nice old school Roland Martin Valvoline Tackle Box. <laughs> and oh, it's got some very special baits in here indeed. The first lure in the box comes to us by way of the Whopper Stopper Company in Sherman, Texas. And it sort of looks like a hellbender with a broken neck. A number of classic designs in their lineup, including the hellbender, the hellcat, the bayou boogie, the whirly bird, and one of my favorites, the dirty bird. This is a pretty cool little crankbait. It is missing a couple hooks, but this thing would definitely be a nice fish catcher. It normally has a hook on the belly. Looks like it's missing a screw-in eye there, and also a hook off of the nose. It does have a nice heart-shaped metal diving lip. There is your main line tie. And yeah, this thing probably fishes a lot like a hellbender, which of course is not jointed. So I bet this thing just makes a holy racket down there. When I see baits like this, I kind of think of the Hellbender or the Mud Bug from Fred Arbogast, or of course that classic wooden bomber. I am definitely gonna work on getting this thing souped up with some new hooks. And uh, I think I know just the guy who can help me out. Uh, hint, hint, Michael Bacon. I recall a number of the Whopper Stopper lure designs like the Bayou Boogie and Hellbender resurface under the Hedden brand. I'm not sure if Hedden purchased Whopper Stopper outright or just acquired the rights to make several of those lures, but even at this point, I think the only one still in the lineup is that Hellbender. Speaking of Hedden, the next bait that John and Lindia sent me is a woo, really pretty Black Shore Minnow colored Hedden. Tad Polly. Let's move the hook so you can see the old belly there. This looks like the medium of the three different sizes of head and Tad Polly, which would make it uh, the model 9000, coming in at a half an ounce and just under three inches. This is a cool bait that I've never actually had in my collection and I've never thrown. So I am totally gonna add this to my head and tackle box. And yeah, this is definitely gonna be a caster for me. I sent photos of all these lures to Daniel over at Dee's Tackle Box, and this is one that definitely had me stumped, and Daniel had a thought that this was either a Shakespeare Dopey or a Shakespeare Dopey knockoff. I did as much search on that bait as I could, 
and I tend to think this might be the knockoff version, only because the Dopey seemed like it had a lip that went from here and extended all the way to the tail, sort of in a little boot like a old school pogo shad. I'm not sure if this is a authentic or a knockoff, but the original Dopey was released by Shakespeare in 1941 and was definitely a neat looking little old school crankbait. It does have a double hook on the belly, which is very interesting design, not a treble hook. And it has got a opened eyelid at the back, and I think all that is missing, to be honest with you, is probably just a hook. So if I get another hook on that, that's what this looks like. A nice, really compact wooden crankbait with a pretty cool concave metal lip. Next, we've got a lure that stumped both Dee's Tackle Box and myself, and that is this old school weedless spoon. It is definitely not a Johnson Silver Minnow, but it is a neat looking weedless spoon. This is an interesting old school spoon. It's got a single hook, a couple of wire weed guards, and a very interesting shape to the nose. Look at that. I'm not sure what that would do for the action, but I guarantee you, you could definitely sling this thing around some swampy Florida waters for sure. Before we get into the next little in the box, I do want to take a quick pause and acknowledge this week's Bass and Butt of the Week. The nomination for this week's Bass and Bud of the Week actually came by way of his wife who wanted to surprise him for his upcoming 47th birthday. According to his wife, Adrian, subscriber Jason Jones catches just about every episode of Retro Bassin each Saturday. Jason sounds like a topwater fishing fool and definitely likes to fish it old school on the lakes of Southeast New Mexico. Well, happy birthday and thanks for tuning in, good buddy. If you want to throw your name in the ring for Bass and Butt of the Week honors, all you have to do is post a picture of yourself on Instagram or Facebook, fishing an old school with vintage rods, reels, lures, or equipment, or Bass and Bud gear, and go ahead and hashtag fish an old school as well as tag me at Retro Bassin. The next lure in the tackle box is a wild one from High Sport. Look at that thing. So according to the research that I did on the line, uh, this lure was originally made by the Texas manufacturer Sportsman's Research in the 1940s. Later in 1956, the company changed owners and was relocated to Fort Wayne, Indiana, where the lure was sold as the new Stanley's High Sport. This lure is made from durable tenite, and according to the company advertising, the exclusive new design creates a fabulous fishing, diving, oscillating action that game fish cannot resist. Whether you're a beginner or an expert, you'll find the high sports lively action can be the difference between a few fish and your limit. This thing is definitely going in my old school tackle box, and yeah, I am 100% going to be throwing this thing probably on a spinning rod is my guess. It's got a unique shape where there's almost a top and a bottom to it. I don't know what the point of that is. And this one comes in a really nice old school frog pattern. Very cool. Next on the list is a me little crankbait from Creek Chub called the Tiny Tim. The Tiny Tim was model 6400 and it is a neat little half ounce inch and three quarter crankbait made by the Creek Chub Bait Company between 1941 and 1978. According to the company, the Tiny Tim was a fast wiggling, deep diving bait with a peculiar shape uh, similar to the natural water insects. It definitely does look a little bug-like, doesn't it? Uh, you're supposed to reel the Tiny Tim in at a moderate speed, occasionally stop in the lure for an instant, and then starting it again. I am definitely a little scared to fish this thing, so I'm gonna have to ask old D's tackle box about the value of this before I do a little chunking and winding. But that thing totally looks like it could catch a bass today. It's got a really unique shape. It definitely is pear-shaped, especially when you look at it from that angle. So I imagine this thing does have a nice little side-to-side -side wiggle. 
I love that classic step design of the metal lip on these creek chubs. Very reminiscent of the old wiggle fish or the fin tail shiner. All in all, a really nice bait that's already got two good hooks. Yeah, nothing to do here but tie on an improved clinch and uh, let it rip. That is it for the first row of lures, but there's some really special stuff deeper in the box. First off, uh, they included a couple of small water charters decals. Thank you guys. And also this pretty sweet button. There is also a really nice old school Abu Garcia Ambassador level line reel. Look at this thing. Nice old school reel. It's got the pearl handle on it. Nice star drag. And, and man, this thing actually looks like it's in pretty good shape for a pretty old reel. So that is a gorgeous looking red. Yeah, I'm definitely going to have to get this thing souped up and strung up. Because that thing should be cast. And for all the Abu folks out there, this looks like a Model 6000 Ambassador. As I said, I'm a neophyte when it comes to old school wooden gold, but I know enough to know that when you get a lure like this, it's a special one. So this lure is a Florida original. It is a Jim Pfeffer Darter. It is missing a hook here as well as a hook and a propeller on the back end of the bait. But other than that, this thing is in some gorgeous, gorgeous shape. Nice old school wooden lure and just look at that color pattern. Jim Pfeffer started crafting lures out of his garage in the 1920s and he's been called the headin' of Florida lure makers. Pfeffer created a number of unique lures, including the Orlando Shiner, the Crippled Minnow, and the Banana Lure. Jim and his wife Betty hand-painted all the early Pfeffer lures, and this spotted creation really looks like an early version of the old-school Spotted Ape. Speaking of the Spotted Ape color pattern, as soon as I saw this bait, I immediately thought of Michael Bacon over at Bacon's Tackle. He is definitely an aficionado of lures that have this color pattern, and I've already talked to him, and he's volunteered to get this thing souped up so I can actually get it out on the water. I don't know if this is going to be a caster or a collector. This is definitely a special, special lure indeed, but I'm definitely going to take this with me next time I head to Shreveport, Louisiana, and I'm looking forward to Michael souping this thing up. Maybe we'll uh, do it on video, huh? Before we get to the final bait in the tackle box, and let me tell you, it's a honey, let's go ahead and do a drawing for the Simple Spinners Lure Giveaway. In case you missed the episode, I purchased a handful of custom inline spinners from Simple Spinners and took them on the water with my two little bass and buds. We had a blast catching some nice panfish and bass on Lake Austin, and at the end of the episode, I had a couple of spinners left over, so I decided to do a little giveaway. I have loaded all of the comments into a random comment picker. We'll go ahead and do that one live for the camera right now. All right, we've got this thing all loaded up. Let's let it rip. And the winner is... Mr. Anderson and the Baldwin Connecticut Bass Buddies. His comment says, great content. Best lure for a kid at any age. Still love to throw the rooster tail. Well, now, Mr. Anderson, uh, if you go ahead and reach out to me, either PM me on Instagram or Facebook, you'll also get to fish the simple spinner because I'm going to send you two of them right quick. Last time I was down in Florida fishing with small water charters, they took me to Headwaters Lake, which I had never been before. We had a blast catching some pretty decent Florida bass, mostly on a new school banjo minnow. In addition to the banjo minnow, I brought along a number of other old school lures for John and Lindia, including a vintage lure called the Diamond Rattler, which was endorsed by a very young looking Roland Martin. You know me, I tend to geek out when it comes to the old school TV fishing show hosts. So when we got back to the boat ramp and John pointed out 
Roland Martin's truck and trailer in the parking lot, well, <laughs> let's just say I turned into a little bit of a fanboy. Well, I snuck on over to Roland Martin's truck and dropped off a retro bass and decal under his windshield wiper. And I thought that's as close as I would ever get to the great American fisherman. Well, while John hung on to that lure, and this is it, the Diamond Jim Diamond Rattler. And you can see, yeah, there is a very young Roland Martin on the cover. So why did John and Lindia send this lure back to me? Well, he kept it on the boat, and he just happened to run into Roland Martin on the water, who signed the bait for us. It says, Chris, keep it retro. Best wishes, Roland Martin. And if you don't believe this was really signed by Roland Martin, check out this video that John also sent me. Hey, keep it retro, Chris. <laughs> That's awesome. John, Lindia, and Roland, thank you for sending this tackle box full of old school gold my way. Well, Bass and Buds, if you're not already subscribed to Small Water Charter, definitely head on over to their YouTube channel and check them out. In addition to that, Dee's Tackle Box, I started following him on Instagram, and he posts a ton on Instagram. And I was really pleased to see that not too long ago, he also started his own YouTube channel. Daniel is definitely a wealth of knowledge and knows a heck of a lot more about these baits than I will in a hundred YouTube careers. So he is definitely worth a subscribe as well over at D's Tackle Box. If you guys are looking for more old school content, click here. Otherwise, I'll see you next Saturday. But until then, keep the carpet side up and definitely fish it old school. Fishing it old school, this old stuff rules. Welcome to Retro Bass. Hey, keep it retro, Chris!